Hello everyone, I am going to make a presentation on introduction to common cause failure CCF. This is a part of safety instrumented system. The video is being taken on behalf of instrumentationtools.com and automationcommunity.com. Kindly watch and subscribe to the channel. Common cause failure will go through an introduction. Safety instrumented system are to be designed carefully taking into consideration many factors. Critical one is common cause failure which may affect cis functionality severely. We will go in detail about the common cause failure and how it can impact the cis functions. A common cause failure can impact two or more separate elements leading to a total system failure. Common cause failure opportunities are to be avoided by careful design thoroughly studied to minimize as much as possible. Common cause is nothing but many instruments sharing a same tapping point or there are multiple cabling going in a same cable tray which can impact the measurement part and disturb the measurement of safety instrumented system. These are the details. A common cause failure can impact two or more separate elements leading to a total system failure. For example, if two flow transmitters are connected to the same orifice flange, a plug could disable both the transmitters. I will explain you over here. See, this is a good practice to use only one instrument, one flow transmitter using the orifice measurement. Or This is known as orifice type of measurement wherein flow is being measured there will be an orifice plate installed over here in between these two flanges and uh, this is a uh, tapping one is high pressure tapping one is low pressure tapping so from which there is a root valve after the root valve the impulse tubing is going to do the measurement on the trans in transmitter flow measurement on the transmitter ideally this transmitter has to be separate this tapping has to be separate for different transmitters this is the correct way of installation in some installations there could be another tubing going to another flow transmitter. So that's what I mentioned in the previous slide. If there is any choking happening in this area. So it can impact both the flow measurements, which is known as a common cause. So the choking or any plugging in this area may impact the measurement on both the transmitters if they are connected together in one orifice flange. This is what mentioned here. Common cause failure opportunities are to be avoided or at least minimized since it is almost impossible to totally eliminate the common cause. Industry typically assumes a common cause factor of 1 to 5 percent on most of the safety instrumented system probability of failure calculations. In the orifice example above, common cause must be adjusted up to 10 percent in the probability of failure demand calculations. This will result in an increased test frequency. So in the safety instrumented system calculation, we are going to do one more uh, this thing known as probability of failure and demand. This is one parameter based on which the cell levels are calculated. So in this the common cause failure factor is being considered which is which is normally supposed to be up to 5 percent can go up to maximum of 10 percent. So whenever we put a higher factor on this which may call for a frequent testing and frequent inspection. Okay. Common cause and independence are inversely related to each other. Perfect independence means there is no common cause well, common cause. That's what if it is a installation is similar to this, this is a perfect independence. So there, it is having no impact from second instrument or something. So measurement is going to be separate. But uh, in a, So it is very difficult in the piping configurations in the plants to put a similar meter over here and making different connections and all. So thereby we need to go with a different technology or with the minimized uh, measurement arrangements. But if a safety instrumented system calls for providing two instruments on the same process, then it is going to be a challenge. But since there is a rarely perfect independence when dealing with the hardware, software, and people systems as related to SI safety instrumented system, common cost must be recognized, planned for and managed. So this is what it mentioned. If it is uh, practically very difficult to make a separate uh, instrumentation, make a separate pipe tapping for different instruments doing the safety instrumented function. So uh, there is always a challenge. So we have to go with the best engineering practice to have a minimum interference if there are two instruments going to be used for the same measurement as well as they are going to be used in the safety instrumented system protection. So the engineering has to be done 
thoroughly either to use only one instrument using this orifice flow tapping another instrument like inline flow instrument can be a mass flow meter or vortex meter like that some other measurement having a different technology okay this is another example of a level measurement in the tank so here we are having two different transmitters this is going to be used in the safety logic solver which which is a safety instrumented system and another transmitter is going to be used in for the control and monitoring system which is a basic process control system bpcs so here also it is a very best practice to have two independent in measurement uh, instruments so that there is no dependency because that's why in the earlier examples also we have seen that safety instrumented system should be handled as independently so this is a best practice and best installation arrangement for the safety instrumented system and the basic process control system that's what is mentioned here ideally sensor for bpcs and sys shall be separate so that any failure happening in this instrument or any trouble or programming error and the instrument etc will not have any impact on the safety instrument system function because this is depending on the other instruments which is uh, going to work continuously and make the necessary protection common cause failure safety instrument system often employ redundancy to enhance reliability but the intended effect may be reduced when common cause failures are taken into account it is often assumed that a certain fraction of component failures will occur close in time due to a shared cause. Study on Norwegian refinery by safety experts. The results are based on a review of some 12,000 maintenance notifications from six different onshore and offshore petroleum facilities. It is found that the new beta values are higher than what is seen in many other similar installations. This was the correction factor whatever you have mentioned is very high compared to the industry standard that's what is mentioned this is by a study by a safety system experts on a Nor norwegian refinery beta factor indicates common cause susceptibility it is a fraction of total failure rate that is attributed to a single cause in common with other typical installation in the group common cause failures can occur due to many types of events such as manufacturing defects in redundant devices aging components severity of operating environment conditions common process connections and common support systems these are the different chances of getting a common cause failure these failures are referred to as dependent failures and are mostly commonly modeled using the beta factor method actually this is a factor which has to be taken into consideration during our sill and probability of failure on demand calculation so wherever there is a need to go with the common instruments the beta factor is going to be high and the probability of failure on demand is going to increase so as far as possible the sharing of instrumentation has to be avoided but in spite of our best engineering there could be chances that the instruments may fail due to this kind of issues like redundant devices may fail due to the aging components or severity of the operating, operating environment etc this is why the proof testing is a another critical requirement as far as the safety instrumented system is concerned again further going on the beta factor the value of the beta factor is selected based on prior use data in the operating environment the prior use data can be for a specific device technology that's what we are talking if it is going to be a flow measurement using a differential pressure type of measurement this particular technology in which are the plants having ideal um, conditions has been installed and the type of failures any issues happened on those instruments can be taken as a reference this is known as a prior use data so that means verifying the type of failures in a similar environment in a similar conditions many plants use a better factor between one to five percent in the devices or user approved for the application and good engineering practices are applied in the design and installation to minimize common cause failure so one to five percent is the ideal one and it is a good engineering practice the beta factor can be substantially higher if good engineering practices are not followed like what we said in the previous example if the instruments are not separate and uh, they are using a similar tapping or uh, in some other requirement at least the valves they keep with the same valve for isolating both the transmitters and all will have uh, an impact so this is those things are not a good engineering Thank you.